What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. We ain't got no guests today. We, we ain't got, got no, no guests, guests today. today. I know they be happy when they hear that. Not the bank head bounce. Ain't that how they used to be doing it back in the day? I thought it was like back and forth. That's what I was doing, no? You was going like one, two, one, two. It's one, 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 one. At least just one side. Yeah. I thought it was both sides. Mm -mm. That's giving like Harlem Shake. I don't know. Oh, uh, that you know. Okay, that's giving. What's that? Soul food. You remember Soul Food at the end of the movie when Big Mama was dancing and she was like, "Oh, I'm not see." That's what Not you Big Mama your arm. Yeah. Do you remember what scene I'm talking about when she was dancing at the reception? Yeah, she was. And she was going like this. What, That's what you so was she doing. She was trying to do the bounce. She was. I swear though, I feel like it just depends. It was different variations. Like, I feel like they definitely had the one, one, yeah. two from side to side. But then I feel like they had people used to be like, Oh, we oh they did. They used to bring it around. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it was different. <laughs> it was different variations of the bounce. It really was. I'm weak. I'm so weak. Yes, it just depends on what mood you <laughs> Not in. you brought it around town, <laughs> around got, the world. You got funky with it. <laughs> and D, speaking of funky, okay. What what for what? So I remember that episode where we was talking about you know. That thing being funky back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So I just feel like I have further claims to support my theory. Okay, go ahead, Dre. Go because, ahead, man. well, this is all I'm gonna ask you because I would really like your honest opinion. If it wasn't funky, then why did Jay Z say that in that song? What song? Give me that funk, that nasty, that gushy stuff. Jay Z said that. He did. But he was and quoting an older song. Okay, that's fine. But what was they talking about when they said, "Let me take you to Funky Town"? <laughs> oh, won't you take me to Funky Town? But I don't think funky was like a bad thing. I don't think funky was like a bad thing, though. I mean, but it, it probably wasn't a bad thing, but then it's also like, you know, one of them things where like, if you don't know no better, then funk is fine. Okay, yeah, funk is, but listen. Funk that's, is cool, because you, you don't know. Do you remember when people used to start? Something that ain't funky. When people started calling people fat, but with P-H-A-T? Remember Fat Farm? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did you used to wear Fat Farm? No, I never did. I don't believe you. You from Orange. <laughs> exactly, I'm from Orange. I was wearing Hollister. And Abercrombie and Fitch. But I feel like the black people, I feel like because the popul the black population in Orange is not as much as like the white population, I feel like the black people was definitely trying to be funky. I, I mean fat. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> I mean fat. I love my black people in Orange, Texas. No, for sure. But I was not around my black people in Orange, Texas. Y'all didn't have city trends? I don't know. Really? I don't know. I really don't. I feel bad for you. I if know you why. Because I was shopping at like Palais Royal. Palais Royal is crazy. I used to love to go to Little Pal Penny. Wieners. So I remember Wieners. Like, what you yeah. had to be going through to name a store Wieners? Was that somebody's last name? I think it had to be somebody's last name, for sure. Wiener as a last name is crazy. You know what's crazy, too? I also remember the way Wieners used to smell. Like Wieners? No, it didn't smell like Wieners. I love the way it smelled. It smelled like wet cement. I love the smell of wet. Like, the smell of, like, after it rains... There's a word for it. If y'all want to Google it, I don't know what the name is, but there's a certain name for like wet cement or like mm -hmm. how it smells after it rains. Mm -hmm. And I remember this smell because when I smell it, I'm like, oh my God, it smells like wieners. But people always think I mean hot dog wieners. Yeah, that hot or, dog water. Or man wieners. Well, first but, of all, I feel like man wieners ain't supposed to smell like nothing. Man wieners have a, a scent. It shouldn't. It smells like skin. Skin is fine, but like when I smell my arm, my arm smells like nothing. But skin has a scent. It's like a body. Like 
Body people have a natural sense. I don't think man wiener is supposed to smell like nothing. But it man does. Wiener, man wiener should smell fresh. Yeah, it smells like your body. Unless you got that. You didn't duck, wash it and you got that, that duck, duck butter. butter. Mm -hmm. You know about that duck butter. I don't know about it because I experienced it. I know about it because I seen I've heard. duck butter with my own two eyes. Did you? Did you scratch it no, off? No, I didn't. Scratch and sniff. I who? I didn't. I said, you need to go take care of that. And then you took care of him. No, I did not. Oh, my bad. Too far. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> now, nah. I don't get down with the duck butter. I don't get down with the duck butter. But no, back to what I was saying, though, because I don't know how we got to duck butter, but somehow we always get off sorry, track. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. I was saying I feel bad for you that you didn't experience the City Trends era. Um, so you didn't never wear, like, baby fat. You never wore so rocker I, wear. I did wear baby fat. You never wore South Pole. No, nope, I never wore South oh Pole. I did God. wear FUBU. I did wear FUBU. I wore FUBU. I but wore baby fat. But you wearing FUBU concerns me because I feel like you... Too young to be you was wearing FUBU when you weren't supposed to be wearing FUBU. Why? Because that was after your era. No, it wasn't. I mean, wasn't. that was before. No, it wasn't. You all realize, yes, I'm older than you, Drea, first Two of all. Two years late. But I still am. I was and wearing FUBU in middle this school. This is one of the rare occasions where I minimize it. Well, all I'm saying is I wore FUBU <laughs> in middle school. Remember when uh, LL Cool J had that song, Fatty Girl, Fatty Girl, no. and they was promoting FUBU? You, okay, maybe you're right. I know. This is why you're right, because I don't remember You don't remember, remember Fatty that. Girl by LL Cool J? No. Fatty Girl, Fatty Girl. What else? That's all I know. <laughs> but it's a real song, I promise. No, I believe it's a real song. I, yes. the, I, I think my first introduction to LL Cool J was, uh, and I shouldn't have been listening to this, but doing it and doing it and doing it well. LL Cool J used to go like this. He did. He did. Why did he do that? And somebody asked him recently, I, I don't know, but it was sexy because he was fine. Yo, what? You didn't think it would be for real. No, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying him doing that was sexy to you? No offense, L.O., I'm a huge fan. See, this is the problem. This is the problem where black people cannot do what white people do. <laughs> what? What? Kiss used to put their tongues out all the time, but now it's a problem when LL do. No, it was a problem when Kiss did it to <laughs> me personally. And too. they used to paint their faces, they, and nobody talked about that. Oh, they definitely got talked about. They definitely I don't did. I don't recall. I do. But I be hearing the LL slander. People be trying to slander that man all the time, just like they be trying to say nobody called him Big Ellie. Y'all don't know that. They did call him Big Ellie, You though. don't know nobody that know I him. I don't know somebody that called him Big Ellie. <laughs> Who do you know that know him? Oh, uh, well, how did that song go? Um, It was one J-Lo song that she called him Big Ellie. No, she did not. Yes, she did. I can't remember. Which though. one? I can't. I'm going to think of it in a second. On the song with him? Mm -hmm. I think it was. Or are you talking about when she said, are you Ellie? Yeah. She was talking to... <laughs> that is what she... She was talking to him. You said it. She was asking LL Cool J, are you Ellie? But no. I can't remember your name. She was spelling no. rules. She was asking LL Cool J, like, are you Ellie? <laughs> No, but I, no, see, yes. I was about to cut, so I didn't know if it was too... <laughs> I be trying to make sure we hit that five-minute mark. Um, no, she was spelling rule. No. Like, ja No. Did you... Did J-Lo tell, tell you that? What I'm trying to ask you is, why would she be talking about LL Cool J on the song with Ja Rule? Because she might have just finished a session with LL Cool J. Remember they had that other song, It's Such a Shame, But I'm Leaving. That remix. Exactly. Proud is what you had, baby girl. You know, Not that's an old have. school song. That that's was going to funky town. That's what I'm saying. So she was still talking to LL. Are you Ellie? She was... Okay. Are you Ellie? And he was like... Somebody, I saw, so going back to what I was about to say, he had did an interview recently and somebody had asked him why he never came out with a chapstick line. And I agree, because he had some of the most iconic lips. He was always ever. biting apples. He was. Do you remember that in his videos? See, this is where it's like <laughs> 89, yeah. 91. Yeah. I don't remember. LL Cool J always had a fresh red apple in he his did. hand. Always. But he, he would bite into him like this. That's good. You know he had good gut health. He still does. His bowels still fine. was moving and grooving. Yes. Because you know apples are like 
They have, they're high in fiber. They gonna make you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know, but I just feel like if you, how did you not wear a South Pole? That's crazy. Yeah, you, I didn't wear so South you Pole. never had one of the puffy jackets with the fur no. on the hood? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. I didn't. That's not what was in style for my school so where I went. Of, okay, so cool, fine. Because I will even say, me going to a school and like I had a lot of black friends, we even used to wear Hollister and like Apostle. Yeah, one point. yeah, yeah. But what kind of hook jackets was y'all wearing? What was y'all wearing? Um, so I mean, we would wear the puffy jackets. Like we we would wear puff jackets. Um, we wore a lot of blue jean jackets, a lot of cropped jackets. Oh, but it was like no brand. Um, no, it was brand. Like I said, it was like the Hollister, Aeropostale, um, Abercrombie and Fitch, Old Navy. Like Old Navy was cool, and when we were in high school. No, Old Navy was cool for me too. Cause remember, I said I used to be. Yeah, we know. The feds are outside, <laughs> so don't say it too loud. Not the feds. Everybody getting got. <laughs> so you might want to keep it. I don't want to get subpoenaed. Hey. Indicted. That's what I'm saying. No, so, that's so old, though. Like, and I'd pay my dues. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I gave back to the community. But yeah, I think the the um the black brands that I did wear. Oh, I used to wear, I, I had some Nautica stuff. I did. I had Nautica. Did you used to wear North Face? No, well, I, guess North I didn't Face have North is still Face. Kind of popping. Yeah, North, North Face is still popping. Um, I don't think it's popping down south necessarily, but I think that's like a New York thing. But people definitely still wear North Face. I used to be, oh my God, I used to be baby fat down. But you know what was baby popular? Fat down, like Tommy Hill figure. We wore a lot of Tommy Hill figure, a lot. Like if you Tommy Hill figure in my day was like having Louis Vuitton on now. Seriously. Like, if you had that little red and white on your shirt, it was like, and my mama used girl. to, what? I used to stay Tommy Hill figure down. Now, that's one thing I can honestly say I never wore, because, you know, I'm from Houston, and Big Mo had this song. Fuck Hill figure, yeah. Boo Boo shirt. Because that was when everybody found out he was racist. <laughs> He was. They said Tommy Hilfiger don't like black people. He didn't. And Aaliyah used to be repping him R.I.P. She did. I wanted that two-piece outfit so bad. You remember the tube top she had and it was red on this side and white on yeah. that side with the baggy pants and the drawers, the Tommy Hilfiger drawers? And she had that bang. But that's all I'm about to say. Let's check. Because, like... It's Friday. And I'm ready to swing. They hit up all that swing. Oh. I used to want that bang bang. But I was so like, hey, like you kind of, it's giving. It's giving that. You know today. what's crazy? Like with the hair, the pants, it's, it's, it's like Let me, can, giving. Can I say this? This is a moment for my girl Yvette. Okay. Because on Broken Play, they always be talking, no shade Yvette. They always be talking about Yvette, her cargo pants. But I get real quiet because I love cargo pants. So do I. And Yvette be cute as in her cargo pants. I love a cargo. That's why I said it's, it be such a difference of what men look for and what women really like because cargo pants be fly as fuck. I love to see a girl in cute cargos and like a cute top and she just swag that shit out. Men gonna wear they pants bag. Yeah, yeah. They be wearing them below the butt because mm. they want to let them nuts hang. They want to let them nuts breathe. Pants on the ground. But when pants we want to let our cooties breathe, it's a problem. Because that's why I like cargo. Yeah. You feel that breathe. Well, they're just comfy and they, they're yeah. cute. And then the cargos, they fit it. So they still show that booty a little bit. But then they baggy But then they the baggy at the bottom. You can wear some cute sneakers. You know, wear a cute little crop, a cute little jacket. You can wear heels too. You like, can I wear heels. Like, yeah. Yes, you can absolutely wear heels it with gives, uh, like, cargos. I just feel like men be having a problem with everything. But that's a topic... For another, for another day. day. Speaking of pants on the ground, looking like a fool with your pants on the ground. Do y'all remember when American Idol, like the auditions used to be the best part? Ooh, yeah. Because do y'all remember, I had a flashback moment. I, I went down a rabbit hole. William Hung was a f***ing superstar. This was before like going viral was like a thing. Now everybody goes viral for everything. William Hung became a millionaire from singing, or uh, what was his name? Ricky Martin. She bangs, she bangs. Oh, baby, when she move, she move. She bangs, she bangs. Oh, baby, when she moves, she moves. And he knew every single word. That mm -hmm. was when you had to have something, something special about you. He was special. 
Because you know, let yeah, me, like no, no, don't say it. I, well, I'm tell, not. I wasn't. Let but... me tell you what was special about him. Because even though he couldn't sing, if you go back and look at his audition, he knew every word and didn't stumble over a word. Barely spoke English, but knew. Every single wasn't messing up the words. He wasn't arguing if it was R U L E or R U L E. He knew the word. First of all, it's it's only one way to say to you. that. R U L E. R U L E. I just feel like <laughs> why would she be asking? We not Ja Rule. Is is he? She couldn't. Maybe she didn't, cool she didn't have her contacts in. Are you Ellie? Okay, anyways. But back to William Hung. But William Hung, I do remember that era that was so It was such crazy. a good era. You have to remember. American Idol was just a phenomenal time. Like, it was a, it was a wonderful we time to be alive. We found one of the greatest... Fantasia. Marino. Fantasia, but one of the greatest white... Kelly Clarkson. Vocalists Kelly ever. Clarkson. Because who... Kelly... Okay, let me tell y'all. Kelly Clarkson literally has a talk show right now. And you know what they tell people? They say, do not go on Kelly Clarkson and sing your song because she going to eat you up on your own song. Yeah. Now, we found Jennifer Hudson there on American Idol as well. Jennifer Hudson is a Grammy winner. Um, what she has a Tony, no. she has an Oscar. So Jennifer can sing. She yeah, can. she can. She can absolutely sing. But Kelly Clarkson. No, wait. This is what we're not gonna do. What I'm saying is, I think. No, I was all I was about to say is Kelly Clarkson really used to eat that up, and yeah. she won American Idol. But what I also will say was, I didn't like how everybody was treating Jennifer Hudson because I think she wasn't prepared. She would just start. Kelly be knowing what she finna do when they come well, sit I'm on that couch. Well, I'm not trying to be funny, but if you could sing, do you got to prepare? Yeah, I be preparing all the time. And this is why this conversation is very questionable and debatable because, yeah, like I said, <laughs> if you got to sing, well, if you can sing, do you need to be prepared? So I'll say this. Like, if I put you on the spot right now. Hey, you won't hold my hair. And my devotion, mm -hmm. you want my loving soul right on the line. Oh, I kind of ate Come that. Come on, you did. You heard it, Tom? Come on, keep, keep going, keep going. I have no doubt that I could love you Ooh. forever. Yeah. The only trouble is you really don't have the time. You've got one night only, one night only. That's all you have to spare. See, I kind of ate but that's, a little. But you just further proved my point. I, Do I, you have I to prepare? prepare. I you was didn't know that before I came. No, you, we rolled together. You roll with me. You're lying. <laughs> You're lying. Okay. And we was on Facetime for like an hour before you got in the car. Let me say that. I just had to say that because you're lying. Hold on. And the point that I'm making is again, if you can sing. So I can sing. You can do a little one too. Okay. 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 But clearly you sing better than the singers. No, I, no, I don't. But let me. The only thing I was saying was, so I, I can't remember what song they sang, but I know this for a fact. Um, what's the other song from Dream Girls that Jennifer Hudson blew up again? Um, what's y'all know the song, the big song from Dream Girls when she was singing to Curtis? I'm, I'm stop right oh, here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. Yeah, so, yeah. one thing I did, okay, so when that movie came out, let me tell y'all, I'm a music head. Obviously, y'all know that. So, when that movie came out, I was in my Jamie Foxx era at the time because. When Ray dropped, I just became obsessed with Jamie Foxx, right? So I was watching everything that he did at the time. So when Dream Girls dropped, I became obsessed with Dream Girls. So I used to watch every single time Jennifer Hudson performed mm -hmm. that song. But I noticed when she um, would do the bridge, I'm not gonna leave you, there's no way. She would never do the big note. She would never do the big note. Like, I, I don't think maybe she was comfortable singing it live or whatever it may be, but I respected that. Because it's very much better to perform and hit the notes that you can hit and maybe harmonize and hit a lower note than try to hit that high note. Because mm. this is no shade, no tea. You see how they've been doing candy for trying to do it. Everybody cheats. 
You see how they've been doing her. But the crazy thing is that was her song. I know, but they've been eating her up for trying to perform it live because it's different from hitting a note in studio and performing it I live. I agree with you, but the difference is, like, if you hit it before, you should be able to hit it again. <laughs> no, with she Jen hit it 30 years ago. With Jennifer Hudson, that was never her song. But you get no, what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, but what I'm saying is she Jennifer hit it in the studio. Now, can she hit it live? I truly believe she can, as I believe Candy can hit it live. But, but I was drinking my drink because I it's didn't say tasty. a word. Ty, speaking <laughs> of what are we drink, what are we drinking today? <laughs> Do you like it? Timing. It's delicious. It's okay. Delicious. Cool. We're gonna call sage. Yeah, that is fresh sage. I be cooking with. I'm starting to grow my own sage. Ooh. I am, but it's. It, I keep. It it's keep good. dying. I'm not doing it right. You got a man. You got a green thumb I'm too. Trying, I'm trying. I'm trying. See you, I'm girl. Trying. He be cutting up. I a love jack of all it. Spray. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna call this one the Birkin Blend because it's Ooh. giving elevated. It's giving sophistication. Okay. It's giving transitioning into a new season. We all elevated and growing around here, over here at 85 South and Fort Mines. So in this one, we have either spirit, either tequila or vodka. You can add any spirit you want at home. We have some elderflower liqueur, some lemon juice, and then we topped it with a ginger lime sparkling water. So just giving it like a little spritz. And then we garnished it with a sage leaf. So this is actually like a sprig of sage. Just kind of getting rid of any bad vibes. Mm, that's welcoming in the autumn. So this is the Birkin blend. Cheers, y'all. This is thank delicious. You, this is thank delicious. Thank you, Ty. Ty, but, and we have to take a pause real quick. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Jerry Nicole. And we are here to tell y'all about ZocDoc.com. If you're a person who always is trying to look for the best doctors, ZocDoc is the one website you need to do that. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare high-quality in-network doctors, choose the right one for your needs, and click to instantly book an appointment. We're talking about in-network appointments with more than 100,000 healthcare providers across every specialty, from mental health to dental health, eye care to skin care, and much more. Yes, they have over 100,000 in-network providers, and you can figure out if they take your insurance. And they also have a range of services from eye care to mental health to dental care. Mm-hmm. Literally every doctor that whatever you need. Whatever ologist you need, <laughs> you know, dermatologist or oncologist, whatever. So what you going to do is go to ZocDoc.com backslash poor minds. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com backslash poor minds. I use this and you should too. So stop putting off those doctor's appointments and go to ZocDoc.com slash poor minds. Find and instantly book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash poor minds. ZocDoc.com slash poor minds. I am so glad Ty came today because let me tell y'all something. Because they it was gonna be a hundred million comments. <laughs> and y'all know we love Ty, but can I just say this for just one second? <laughs> Because I think me and you do a good job of, at the end of the day, yes, I realize, because obviously, um, we're not going to talk about it, because I know y'all want us to, but like with the shits and gigs things that happened, and everybody was going crazy on social media, I realized, oh shit, like, we, our, our, what we say holds a lot of weight, you know, and that was a big realization for me, because honestly, I still feel like we in your uh, living room, sitting on the floor, and we're not. No, I'm saying I feel that way because I feel like I'm just talking to my friend. Work doesn't feel like work. No, I feel and I think that's why the show is successful. But that moment, it was a realization that I needed before something serious happens. You know what I'm saying? Before, like, something really happens But I feel like we don't say nothing bad. We don't. Like, we're very, we're very conscious about the things that we say. But what I say... God going to throw that, pe- that g- grain. So that was our grain, and we needed that. was their grain. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is... <laughs> that wasn't my I, we, You know, I see our audience, yeah. and that helped us see. Because, like I said, our words hold a lot of weight, which I didn't know. That's what I'm saying. Say. So anyways, I say all that to say, in the midst of that, y'all fighting the wars with shits and gigs in the Atlanta comment... We fighting a war because they like, where is Ty? Where is Ty? And I try not to respond They've to them. They've been on our ass I try in the not comment. to respond to them because at the end of the day, like, things that we have going on, like, Ty 
is a business woman. She runs her own business. She has a lot going on. So I'm like, it's not y'all business what her schedule is. So we, you know, we try not to respond, but it got to the point where people were creating stories, Ty. Yeah. No, I had to respond to somebody. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I did respond to one person. I had to. I did respond to one person because they had left a comment because we had did the Act Normal podcast with Jada and Dez. Shout out to, the, to Jada and Dez. But we had did their podcast and we talked about an intern that we had on the show, well, for the show. And then... We ended up years having, ago. like, this was, like, five, six years ago, before we ever even had, like, any staff or anything. Like, she was just an intern. We was not she paying her. She for free because we had no money. Yeah, so we were talking about how we had to, like, let her go because it had just got weird or whatever. And somebody left a comment, and they was like, I know they said it was an intern, but I think they talking about Ty. No, we uh, not. And I had to respond back to them. <laughs> I was just like, be fucking for real. Y'all just be saying anything. Anything. It be so crazy because I've never the been... The narratives the that people the, create yeah. in their yeah. mind. The narratives, like, they felt like it was something. I'm like, the girl is working. It's She's very much nothing. Busy. She We're just trying be, to get some money, y'all. Yeah, that's she on. just be working. Yeah, like, I felt, and that's what I was saying. I was like, y'all have to realize, like, we are only here two, three times a month. This is a part-time job for a lot of people. For everybody. For everybody. So I was like, Ty. Except us. Except us. <laughs> well, <laughs> we be working though now. Not we be working. We be working. <laughs> we be working. I post we do content be working. so much now. I do too. You, you do. I, I do too. We yeah. are content queens now. Because you know what? I know we, we haven't even gotten to these topics. I will say this. I am tired. And I know... Let it out, Luke. I am tired out. of seeing these brand trips and me and Drea are not on these brand trips. Ooh. Look at us. Head to toe. We have... Hair always fly. Makeup always tea. Fits be tea. Bodies tea. We... But this is the thing, though, because... Personalities tea. Personalities tea. But I feel like because... This is where it comes in at, because y'all see YouTube channels that get millions of views, and yes, they have influence, but y'all are still underestimating, because it can be somebody that has a million views, but how many people are buying what they're selling? And one thing is, like, we're honest on this platform. We don't promote nothing that we don't really like. So when we say something, they know, like, okay, they're not lying. Like, they, they really like this product. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we should be on these brand trips. Well, yeah, and I don't think it's, like, necessarily a million, millions of viewers things. Because I be seeing people who have, like, smaller platforms than us on brand trips. Well, that's because I think they value um, quick content over long content. Mm. We have mm. a show that's an hour and a half, but they don't realize people are sitting and watching this show for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Versus somebody... Attention span. One thing I will say, Poor Minds has stood the test of time with attention span. Because... People like TikTok videos. It's 20 seconds. Do I, do I buy this foundation or not? Tell me. And if you don't tell me in 20 seconds, I'm scrolling. But we mm -hmm. have stood the test of time of people are paying attention to what we say. We know that because Bop of the Week is at the end of the show. And they be like, damn, Lex, I love this song you put me on. So I know y'all listening. Yeah. So I think that a lot of these brands are passing up the podcasts that are still here that have an audience, and y'all are missing out on a whole nother demographic of people. We have these older people that aren't on social media. They have cable and they have YouTube. And they be on YouTube scrolling. They don't have Instagram. They don't have TikTok. There are people out there like mm -hmm. that. They don't even know I have a TikTok. They don't even know I have an Instagram. Right. They, you know what I realized? Somebody walked up to me that they said, oh, you that girl from Facebook. I don't be on, be on Facebook. Shay runs our Facebook. But she you know how much my... I've been trying to build my personal Facebook. Guess how many followers I got on there? 500. 500. I don't even know how many followers I have on Facebook. I think I might have like a thousand, but I haven't been active on there since I was like so I use my personal twenty two. I use my personal and it's Facebook. mostly my family and my college friends. My yeah. personal Facebook is with my real name. That's for my friends and my family. Yeah, me too. So I created another one. It's a Lex P Facebook, but it only oh. has five hundred followers on. Yeah, it. see, I don't have a Dre and a Cole Facebook. I just have like. Why well, I'm not telling y'all my name. Yeah, my name because that's what I'm saying. I didn't realize it's a two different thing. Yeah. I didn't realize that. So Facebook has a, a whole nother thing you have to create. And I was like, oh, I only have 500 followers on there. I be trying to post, but, but that's what I say. Like, it be so much that we be missing out on. Because it be people who have whole careers 
and are making hella money on Facebook. But, you know, like I said, Shay runs that for us. But I feel like these brand trips, y'all need to start including podcasters on there. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of people in this space. Like, um, imagine, you know, even though it's like a taboo thing, but I feel like even with the sex toys, sex toys is a big industry. Imagine like a, a horrible decisions or like a cocktails on a brand trip with like couples or whatever, you know, going to the hedonism, stuff like that. I ain't gonna lie. I was on Revolve the other day because I love me some Revolve. Mm -hmm. I always be on there shopping, buying clothes and stuff. I was on Revolve the other day, right? And I was like scrolling new items. A rabbit came up. I said, wow. A rabbit? Yes. What's a rabbit? You know what a rabbit is. I don't know. You what have a... one. I don't have a rabbit. You don't have a rabbit? What's a rabbit? I ain't talking about a bunny. Bu That's what I said, bugs? No. Yeah. The rabbit What's bob. Up, yeah, it be urine. <laughs> yeah. The bob. <laughs> <laughs> a vibrator. But okay. I was, like, scrolling the new items on Revolve, and, like, literally they had a rabbit vibrator. That came. Revolve has everything. It does. It's like Walmart. But high, a little high more high-end, high but Walmart. If you aren't on Revolve, I suggest everybody go... Revolve has a lot of good Revolve be having the pieces. I get a lot of my stuff from Revolve. Yeah. I always be taking it and stuff, too. But, yeah. You know, they definitely had a vibrator on there. Okay, so how about, you want to get into these topics? Of course. Because Jesus Christ. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And if you're anything like me, you always sign up for subscription services and totally forget about them after that free trial is over. Mm -hmm. So rocketmoney.com is here to help you get rid of all the apps that you're not using. Yes, I love Rocket Money because although they do help you cancel your subscription so you don't have to get on the phone with customer service, what I really love is that it monitors your spending. Like, it will literally send you a text message and it's like, oh, you spent 23% less money this Ooh. week than you spent last week. I so I love it. it for that reason because it's good for budgeting. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. Yes, and they will negotiate to get your bills 20% lower. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. rocketmoney.com is the place to be if you're trying to save money. They save their members up to $740 a year. I don't know about y'all, but I would love to have that in my pocket. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is go to rocketmoney.com backslash poor minds. That's rocketmoney.com backslash poor minds and sign up today. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash poor minds. That's rocketmoney.com slash poor minds. So we have been trying to talk about this topic for weeks and we keep talking, talking so long we don't get to it. Okay, so the first topic today, we want to talk about the desperation of being in your 30s. So as y'all know, I just turned 35. Drea is 33. And... We are in a state of our lives, like, where we are noticing a lot of things have changed, whether it's, like, women who write in on the show, women who DM us, our friends, our family. And um, it's a lot of desperation that happens in your 30s. And it's not a bad thing. I think it's just an issue that we need to address. Mm -hmm. So I personally feel like, and this is going out to the women because obviously I'm a woman. I don't know what goes on with men in their 30s and this and that, but this is a woman conversation. I feel like people are so afraid of being lonely and being single, especially in their 30s, that they settle for anything. Mm. And what I've learned for me personally, I have a value of certain things. I value being single and happy versus settling for anything because I'm not lonely. Mm -hmm. The feeling of being loneliness sucks, but being with a partner who sucks is worse. It's a hierarchy for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's not the same for everyone. Because I did have a conversation with a friend of mine and she was like, loneliness literally makes me feel like I want to jump off a damn bridge. She's like, I can't do it. I need partnership. I need something there. It doesn't have to be deep, meaningful. I just, I like to have somebody next to me at mm, night. But see, that's where I feel like it's a difference between being alone and lonely. Yeah. People be, it's okay to be alone because yeah. you need a long time. Facts. Being lonely, I feel like for some people, is like debilitating. Mm-hmm. 
But that's where I feel like you got to do more inner work because you should be okay with being by yourself. You shouldn't okay. need another person to make you whole. Because at the end of the day, like, you were born into this world. I, well, I didn't want to say that because I know, like, you know, you got twins and shit. But, like, <laughs> but like technically, even with twins, like, y'all are born at different times. Like, Sometimes they be eating each other in the womb. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like, I, I have seen that. But usually the one that's getting eight don't survive. That's what I'm saying. So you really, you was almost... Born with somebody, but you still born, born alone. alone. You was born into this world. Like, it's just me. <laughs> I got a fiend for myself. I... All right. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, I just feel like that's when you have to do a little more inner work. Mm -hmm. Because I really kind of pride myself on this. Like, you have to be okay with being by yourself. If you cannot be by yourself and spend time by yourself... Something is wrong. If you got to always be in a relationship, if you got to always be around somebody, if you got to always be... And it's not even just like a romantic relationship necessarily. To me, it's friendship. It's all type of relationships. It could be with your parents, whoever. But if you always got to be around somebody and a long time make you nervous, you need to do some more work. Because you need to be okay with yep. being alone. I think that's a problem when people cannot be alone. It's a big now, I problem. understand yearning for a life partner. I think we were all put on this earth and, like, I personally do believe everybody has a soulmate. Do I feel like everybody gonna find them? No. That's a topic for another time. I just feel like it's so many people in the world. Mm. You may not, never find your person. Oh, my God. I've been watching this show on, um, I just started watching this show on Netflix. I was telling you about it, I feel like. The Good Place. Yes, you did tell me. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, like, an interesting, like, little quirky show. But I love, like, kind of, like, deadpan humor type of shows. Like, I'm a big fan of, like, The Office and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, The Good Place is, like, a very quirky show. But it's basically, like, when people die, this is where you go. And, like, on the show, the people, everybody who has died, like, you don't meet your soulmate until you go to The Good Place. Mm. So even if you didn't meet them on Earth, you meet them when you die and you go to the good place. So I was just saying that to say, like, I do feel like, um, I don't know. I feel like everybody has a soulmate, but I'm not sure if you will meet them in this lifetime. You know what I've realized? I don't mean to interrupt you, it's but okay. what I've realized as I've gotten older, too, like, I used to connect with people. And I used to be, like, devastated when it didn't go the way I wanted to or break up. But what I'm really is realizing is I'm such a worldly person. Mm. I have a personality that gets along with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I connect with somebody for a season or sometimes it may be a lifetime bond, whether it's friendship, family, a boy, whatever it may be. So what I'm starting to learn is I'll get this again. I'll get it again. And if it's meant to be forever, that's why I always say, am I in love right now? Absolutely. But if we break up tomorrow, I'm going to be okay. And I've learned to be okay with that. With like... And I always was like, oh, I feel so stupid because I be talking about this and I got a boyfriend and then next week we break up. But I'm like, now I'm okay with that because, yes, I love. I'm a lover and I'm okay with that. I love love. I love being in love. But guess what? I love myself. And I think people enjoy that type of stuff, too, because they be feeling like if they break up with somebody, they not going to find somebody else. So they be wanting yes, that. Yes, I used so to feel that, that So they be wanting that for you, Yeah, too. But yeah. it's like, baby, no. Like, and that's what I had to realize. If it's a wrap and I got to move on, I'm going to move on and I'm going to find somebody else. And I'm going to find somebody else. And I'm going to find somebody else until I find the one. Let me tell you how much I am that Just drug. being real. Like, who, however, and, and, and to me, finding somebody else doesn't necessarily mean you have to have all of these sexual partners. Right. But it's like, if me and somebody break up and it does not work out, I'm going to go on a date and go on a date and go on a date until I find somebody else that I or get along with and that I like. I enjoy my me time. That is... But I think you got to get to... I think you should get to that point before you start dating. That's what I'm saying. And that's what I was getting at. So, like, I can wake up tomorrow and I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Like, I enjoy writing in my journal. I write in my journal every day. I enjoy slaying in my bed and watching true crime. Did you say slaying in my bed? Slaying. Oh. That lying. I'm, I'm a little say that too. Slaying. I do be slaying in the bed. You do all be FaceTiming. You all be like, where you going? But let me tell y'all how much it's like, it's about having confidence in yourself. 
Five years ago, I would have never posted a HD video of me on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter, on anything, bare face, no makeup, not a lick of nothing. I be on, I be on my shit all the time. Nothing on but Muse Beauty, baby. Yeah, same. Nothing. No filter, no makeup, like, no nothing. This is who I am. I used to try to quiet my voice down, not be so loud. Somebody left a comment on our last video, and they were like, Lex, stop all that damn laughing. It's not that damn funny. Yes, the fuck it is. Everything is funny to me, bro. And I don't be playing. I be laughing. Everything is funny. I don't take shit serious. Me and Dre can be in the car or, or get pulled over. I'm laughing my ass off. That's funny to me when people be thinking I'm serious. <laughs> And they be like, oh, look at Drea joining in. Bitch, they be like, I love when Drea joins in. What? She the big one that started half the time. Well, but I also, I too take nothing serious. Nothing serious. Ever. But that's what I feel like. That's what life is supposed to be. Life yeah. is meant to be enjoyed. Like, I'm, we're supposed to have fun. We're supposed to enjoy it, whether I'm with friends or not. Let me tell you something. I be in my house having a ball by myself. You know what I did this morning? Well, I be feeling like if they had, like, if somebody ever hit a camera in my house, oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. I would no, be no. so embarrassed. Because I, I be doing that, some embarrassing stuff. I put on that song this morning, call me. If you need someone to talk to, uh, call me. Satisfaction. I turned that shit on. I was cleaning up. <laughs> call me. You know, okay. And I had a ball for literally like I was that ain't really up. embarrassing. No, it's not embarrassing. <laughs> it's not no, that's not embarrassing. What I'm what I'm saying is I have fun alone. You paused to have fun I alone. Yeah. Like you know I'm people saying? who take themselves too serious. Like I can't be around you. Yeah. So I feel like in your 30s, in your 30s, I understand women. Trust me, as a woman who is 35, never been married, don't have kids. Do not get so desperate for partnership and children that you're settling for anything. That's what I wanted to say. But also, too, like, whatever is for you. I think when people get in a mindset and really accept that, like, whatever is for you is for you. Can't nobody stop what's in your past. Can't nobody stop what God already has ordained for your life. So it's like, once you really truly believe that and live your life that way... You are not worried about timelines. I feel like that's why I can honestly say, like, at this point in my life, I don't be worried about timelines. Like, yes, I still want to have kids. Yes, I want to get married. Yeah, it's certain career heights and career goals and stuff that I have that I haven't reached yet. But I'm not worried about it because to me, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Man, come on. <laughs> Yeah, it's a matter of when. It's like, on, it's not man. about if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen because God has showed me time and time again that whatever it is that I manifest and that I want for my life, as long as I put the work in, it's going to all come to fruition. I think that people be scared because they ain't got enough faith. And also... And that's a story for another time. That is a story for another time. But I also feel like y'all like to um, think that Y'all have more control than what y'all do. Or more control than what God has. Hello? Ooh. Yeah. Because like I said, y'all know all that all that stuff that happened, you know? And it was no, literally... No, what's the... What we just talked about. What? What the sh oh, yeah. So it was literally people like, oh, cancel Lex and Dre, cancel Lex. But one thing I can say... Y'all can't cancel me. But, respectfully. But what... No, no, no. But, but disrespectfully also. No, but let me say this, though, because I feel like one thing I can say about me... And my friend, we don't have a malicious bone in our body. I done met people who are literally malicious people and they do mean things. People so are. I say all that to say is we are so spiritual and we move in that. So we're going to learn our lesson. We're going to learn our lesson. But it's not on you to say this is not what we supposed to be doing. They need to be canceled. That's not your say so. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Nobody has say so over there. Yes, but, it gets um, very. Yeah, a it lot gets of very weird. A lot of people just be very negative. You yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like they be speaking from a place of not being able to do themselves. Yeah. But I don't know. Going back to like being desperate in your thirties, I definitely feel like women for sure get desperate mm. when they get in their thirties and they just be settling for anything when it comes to relationships, when it comes to career choices, when it comes to friendships. People are so afraid of being alone, but it's like if you find solace and you find peace within yourself, if you really love yourself, you're not a, you're not afraid of being alone. Being alone is the most peaceful 
place that you could be if you yes. really love yourself and have a good relationship with self. Like, it's okay. Like, I understand wanting camaraderie, wanting to be around other people. I wanting like to when you say that word. Camaraderie. <laughs> Wanting to fellowship, like that's normal. We humans, like nobody wants to be by themselves all the time. Nobody wants to be alone. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But no, you right though. Like it's like nobody wants to be, and Usher was right too. Nobody want to be alone. You touched by the word. Oh, this song. So it's fine to want to be around people, but it's like if you're dependent on yeah, those relationships, yeah. that's when it becomes a problem. And then I think a lot of the time, that's when people start putting up with bullshit. Mm, that's what I wanted to get into. Yeah. The bullshit. You dealing with somebody who is fighting all these demons, who got their own things going on, problems that they need to solve. They have no business being in your bed, being in your presence. Because a lot of times you be like this pot. A lot women, I'll say this. The number one thing we have people say are people that DM me and they say, I was such a happy person. I was so positive. And then I just turned into something I I never rec I didn't even recognize myself anymore. And it's like, yeah, because you're are you are dealing with something just because you don't want to be by yourself. And to be fair, can I say this too? Like, I hate when people say stuff like that, because nobody can turn you into nothing. Um, I you know what I'll say? People can't. I feel like you always no, have no. control. But you you always have control over how you respond and how you react to things. You have control over how you let things affect you. True, but somebody can bring, just like somebody can bring out the good in you, somebody can bring out the bad in you if they if you let them stay around long enough. Now, some people are blessed enough to recognize those signs, but if you don't and you let that person stay in your life that ugly side is going to come out. Mm -hmm. So you are not recognizing yourself anymore because you've allowed this person to stay in your life. So that's what I'm talking about because that was me. Mm -hmm. I've been there before of trying to fight for something because you think, oh, this is my person. Let me tell you how much I'm not staying with nothing no more. But I feel like all the signs be pointing to that's not your person and people be trying to be like, that's my person. Because it's the desperation. And I can say that for myself. Yeah. It was the desperation because I was scared to be alone. Because they'd be oh. like, all the signs is pointing there. This is not... not God, God did not say this. He did not send this God, person. I'd be like, God, or show whatever, me. Or whatever. God will show you. You'd be like, show me again. Yeah. Or whatever you believe in, whether it's God, whether it's the universe, whatever it is that you believe in, like... They didn't see this person, and I feel like the signs be there, but mm. people still be like, no, I know you, I'm going to prove that it is my person. And no matter and how not. good of a woman you are, no matter, let me say this, sah. say this to the camera. Not this, sah. no matter how good of a woman you are, if that person is not for you, that person is not for you. And also realize the signs when these niggas don't want to... When, and let me not even say niggas, when people don't want to be with you no more, realize them signs too. Because hey. I think sometimes people be trying to show people that they don't want to be with the person no more. Because they don't they have be the like, nuts. They, they be like, well, to be too much in there, and they don't have the, they don't, they can't let them nuts hang. Yeah, the sign to say, no, I don't want you no more. And they be like, I can't read. Men, and let me tell y'all, women, we <laughs> like it in black and white. Men love a good gray, they love them gray sweatsuits, bitch. But that's where they, we... But that's what I'm saying. Men are not going to tell you. Women be like, if you want to be with me, then just tell me. The sign's going to tell you. They're not... A man is never going to want to tell you. His actions are going to tell you. Because a man that wants to be with you is going to look at you in your face, say, hey, I'm gonna, I want to be with you, but he's going to show you. Yeah. I feel like it's just a lot of things. You know, w women, when they get to their 30s, they be, like, wanting to have kids. They be wanting to get married. I think that when you're in your 20s, you feel like you have so much time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, like, nobody talks about that. But the crazy thing is, when you get to your 30s, you have so much time, too, because, like, life expectancy is, like, 70-something, 80-something years old. You have time to have children. But I think that people have always been taught that, like, oh, if you don't have... Because if you really... Look at Halle Berry! Look at Janet! Yeah, look at Halle, look at Halle Berry, look at Janet. But I also think when you, you look back to like our grandparents, me too, Ty. 
I think when you also look back to like our grandparents, our aunties, our parents, like everybody was having children really young. And then I feel like our generation, like the millennials, really changed that shit. But then I feel like Gen Z back on their bullshit. Well, I'll say this Gen too. Z, Gen Z be popping them babies Millen- out early. Millennials, because we care about... They do. Um, we care about being financially stable. Millennials were the first generation to say, hey... I don't give a fuck about this job. I'm moving around. You're not paying me enough. And I'm going to tell this next job what I want. Our parents were taught to stay there and hold it down. Our parents were saying, hold it down to everything. Millennials, we not holding down shit. P.O.P. hold it down. P.O.P. hold it down. We ain't holding down nothing, bro. No, we not holding down shit. We not holding down a job. We not holding down a nigga. Nothing. We not holding down nothing. But that's how we it's don't supposed play. to be because you get one life. Yeah, yeah, you do. Now she want to hold though. You already know, though. You only live once. That's the motto. YOLO. YOLO. A word. A word was said, They Pastor. did. They said that. I don't know. I just feel like it makes me sad because I feel like people be feeling like they don't have enough time. Mm. When in reality, I mean, technically that is kind of true because you don't know how much time you have here. But that's why you just have to live your life like every day is your last day. But at the end of the day, don't do no shit that you don't want to do just because you scared that you don't have enough time. Right. And I'll say this. When I imagine... Because if it's meant for you... What is your like, like when you can say, I did it? Like, what does that look like to you? Like, life? Yeah, like, when you were like, okay, this is what I was supposed to do in life. I feel like I've said this before. Like, I feel like, for me, it's just being able to wake up every day and do exactly whatever it is that I want to do. Like, being able to afford whatever I want to afford. If I want to go somewhere, if I want to take my friends somewhere, if I want to do something for my mom, I could just wake up on a random Tuesday and be like, okay, I did that. Yeah. So for me, it's that. Plus, for sure, like, having a family is important to me. Like, um, I feel like if something happened to me and I didn't ever get to have a family, I would be sad about that. Yeah, yeah. You know? So I feel like having a family, waking up to my... Thank you. Waking up to my kids, waking up to my husband and our beautiful home, and we both extremely successful and accomplished and then just also being able to do for the people around me and also do for other people because I really want to be more like philanthropic the Mm -hmm. more money I make like I really want to like give back to the community and stuff like that more um so for me that's when I feel like I made it yeah like it's not necessarily a certain number in my bank account yeah I do think you need to have a certain number in there. Right, of course. But, yeah, yeah. but for me, it's not a certain number that I need to see. It's more about the things that I'll be able to do mm-hmm. for other people. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I like that. I like that. What, I, what is it for you? I think for me, um, I always ask myself this. I ask myself this a lot because sometimes I find myself unhappy and sad or and I'm just like and then I'll get a tweet or I'll get a DM or you'll call me or Kilo call me and it'll lift my spirits up but what I've realized is everything I've wanted my entire life I'm doing it now I think I try to find my happiness in other people in materialistic Mm -hmm. things and I realized I was sent on here to make people laugh and make people happy. And I'm doing that right now. That's why I say a lot of times we're so busy chasing our dreams and you don't realize you're living it. And I think for my dream, it was like, I just want to make people feel good. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn. Like, I'm living it right now. Like, I'm doing what I always wanted to do, and that's entertain people. Yeah, I think people run from their purpose a lot because they be afraid of who they can really be if they tap into it. Yeah. I think you do that for sure. Yeah, and I... But I think we both do. I think we both do that. Of course. Because I think you run away from, like... I feel like your God-given gift is, like, making people laugh. Yeah, yeah. Like, for real, for real. Like, I feel like... 
everybody has their talents. Everybody has that thing that God gave mm-hmm. them that makes them special that they need to tap into. And that's like your purpose. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So I feel like for you, your purpose is definitely like your humor. Mm-hmm. It's making people laugh. It's being able to put people in a good mood. But I feel like you definitely run from it a little bit at times because I feel like you're afraid of the rejection. Well, no. But you know, people, but everybody thinks you're so funny. Well, you know what it is? I think it's because how I want to do it. I think... I think you have an idea in your head of yeah, how you want to do it. Yeah, I know how I want to do it, and that's what I'm like. Okay, this... Because I have to listen to myself, and I have to listen to, like, God and what he's leading me to, and I know what I feel comfortable with. So I know the, that route that I'm taking and what the next steps that I'm doing. But, like I said, I think for me, for so long, I thought oh, once I make this amount of money, I'm going to be happy and everything's going to be okay. And once I get this, everything's going to be okay. And I got there and I'm like, the thing that makes me happy constantly is coming here and being being able to have a community that accepts me Mm -hmm. and that understands me and that sees me and that I can make them feel good because that makes me feel good. Yeah. Because I I say all that because, like I said, I spent so much time being unhappy and feeling like, oh, my God, I just need money. I just need this Louis Vuitton bag. I just need this. And once I got that, I was like, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. You You get the good man. You get the rich nigga. You get the this and you get to that. And I'm like, for me, though... I was like, I am a people person. That's why when all that stuff happened, that's why I keep bringing it up because I know. But I was just like, oh, I know how it feels to feel on the outside and feeling like you don't have nowhere to be. And one thing I can say about Poor Minds, we have done an amazing job of creating a space for black women to come and feel seen, no matter how you look, how you dress, your body type, your body shape your sexual orientation, like, this is a safe space. And I never want anybody to feel like you're outside of that because I know how it feels to feel on the outside and you don't know where you belong. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I think, like I said, like, I was going back to what I was saying. Like, I feel like people run from their gifts all the time. Like, I feel like I'm kind of, like, my power is in, like, being transparent. Mm -hmm. But I feel like for a very long time, like, I ran from, like, transparency. Yeah. Like sharing myself, like sharing my full self with people. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, but I'm starting to realize like that's one of the main things that people love for me is like love it. my transparency, how I always be saying some real shit. I always got The profit. Okay, stop. <laughs> profit is such like But a, it is though. I mean, that's, yeah, that's fair, but I feel like that's such like a a deep word. But that holds a lot of meaning behind you say it. A I lot don't of profound things that people need to yeah, hear. Yeah, I do. I do. I think that I do say a lot of profound things that people need to hear because I've been through a lot of shit that I think people don't really know that I've been through. Because, like, again, I said I've always ran from kind of like, I just always feel like I'm supposed to keep my business to myself, mm-hmm. which is fine to a certain extent. I do feel like when you get in the space that we're in, it is certain parts of your life that you have to keep private. Right, if right. If you want right. to remain happy and you want to remain sane. But I do think it's parts of myself that I don't share with people or I haven't shared with people over the years that I've started to finally share. And I feel like it really do be helping people. Yeah. So I think, you know, both of us, like, we have to just learn to, like, live in our... Truths. In our truths and our gifts. And, like, you know, that's what people look to us for. But it's scary. It is, but that I feel like that should be the desperation in your 30s. To find self to find and to find self. your purpose. It shouldn't be a man. I get so I, upset when I see women that I know, women that write in. Like, you have the world at your fingertips. Just because you're 35, I'm not settling for nothing. But I do think society makes... You can't blame women for that because that's all we've been taught. Like, even looking to my family, like, I have aunts right now who be like, when you gonna have a baby? Yeah, yeah. When you gonna have a baby? Yeah. You know? And it's like, because they had kids at, like, 19 and 20, and that's cool, but, like, that wasn't my journey. That wasn't my path, and that's okay. But look how hard and I didn't want their to have children a... have to do yeah. to create. When I, if, if I'm blessed with a child or if I ever have a child, I want my child... To have an easy life. You can't, you can't say if you gotta say when, if that's or, what you or want. Or if or when, I don't know. But like I said, what 
No matter what I say, if it's in my path, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So I say that because I don't know. But I want it when I win or if, if, when, I want my child to be like, I can do anything. By the time my oldest nephew graduates high school, I want him to be like, I can do anything because my auntie did this and X, Y, Z. I got all the connections in the world. Because that's cool will. that y'all had kids at a young age, but what were your kids able to do off the strength of you? And I don't believe that a child's, like, I don't necessarily like the word legacy no. because it's not your child's job to carry on your legacy or have that pressure. I hate that. I do hate that. But I do feel like they should have the options. And I do hate when people be saying stuff like that, too. Like, somebody had actually left a comment under one of the episodes we just did recently, and they was like, well, if y'all gonna have kids, y'all need to have them soon. I seen that. You seen I it? I saw that. They said, they was like, if y'all gonna have kids, y'all need to have them soon, because if not, if y'all gonna, y'all are gonna be 40 having, like, a five-year-old or That's a four-year-old. Cool. So if you don't have them in the next five years, y'all just shouldn't have them. And I'll just be like, okay, well, like, should I have had one at 22, like you, and then they 18 and, like, they don't have a college fund nothing. or a trust fund and or, like, nothing? The things that I went through in my late 20s. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I hate when people try to put those time frames on people, like, oh, you're not going to be able to run with your kids. You're not going to be able to play with them. Why so not? Because, baby, I be in the gym. I be in the gym four or five times a week. I'm very healthy. I'm very, I very much can run and hang with my child. Like, what are y'all talking about? But people try to put that pressure on you because it's something that they, they did. did. And it's like, I didn't, I didn't need to have a kid at 22. And because you had one at 22, does that make you better than me? Because can you provide for your child more than I will be able to provide for mine when I have them at 40? And also, like Probably I said, not. what I went through in my late 20s, huh? Like, hey, I, that too. She can run with them kids. Hello? So I don't people try to make you feel bad about that too. Like they be like, oh, well, having a nanny, you're not really being a present parent. How am I not being a present parent because I can afford help? Is it because you could not afford help that you feel that way? Or is it because you feel like I'm really not present? Because I'm there. And let me and let me say something to that too. Because people always say it takes a village. It does it take does. a village. What's the difference between your baby staying with your sister or the grandmama or me or staying a with an, having a nanny? It ain't no difference. It takes a village, period. Yep. So if I can hire help because I don't have, you know, a mother or a sister or a brother to be here, it's a village. I think sometimes people just be mad at the privilege because honestly, being able to have a child later in life is a privilege. It's a fucking privilege. And I privilege. feel like that's the problem that people don't look at it like that and acknowledge it like that because that's what it is. Yeah. Being able to have a child later in life is a privilege. Being able to be financially stable when you finally decide to start a family is a privilege. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people did not have that privilege. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes people feel some type of way that you have the audacity to like boast Do you about it. Yeah. I guess too. Well, and I, be grateful. I don't want to say boast about it, but just be grateful for yeah. the fact that, like, because I'm grateful. Like, no part of me, the older I get, when I was younger, I'm not going to lie, like, I used to be like, oh, I feel like I missed out on my opportunity to, like, have a baby. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about this before. And, like, I feel like we both was in situations where, like, when we were younger, we could have had kids mm -hmm. with people. But, and I used to, for a while, feel like, oh, I, I should have did this at that moment. But, like, now that I'm... 33, I'd be like, fuck no. Thank God. My quality of life would have been so fucking fucked up if I would have... And, and not, like, the quality as far as, like, material or monetary things, because I would have been straight in that lane. But when it comes to my mental, the shit I would have had to deal with on a normal mm. basis, like, mm. I'm so grateful that I decided not to... Well, not I decided, but God decided for me to not have to take that road. Right, right. You know what I mean? And, like, it's okay. When things... And I'm comfortable now at 33 that when things are going to happen for me, it's going to happen and God going to make sure that it happened with the right person. Because one thing I know for sure at this point in my life, my ancestors... They got your baby. And God don't play about me. Hello? At all. And that's why I said, I could imagine yeah. being my... They don't play. In my late God's 20s. favorite, period. How bad I struggled And my, in my daddy late... been up there doing his big... That's what I'm saying. Like, being in my late 20s, I struggled so bad. I could not imagine having a child yeah. with what I was going through. And trying to find myself, trying to find emotional intelligence, trying to be a better person 
For me, but also while raising a child. That's why I say a lot of women and a lot of men, just everybody, a lot of people, give your parents grace. They didn't have time to go to therapy. They didn't have time to do self-growth because they were self-growth because they were mm-hmm. raising children. And I know so many people who be like, saying little stuff, which I know they don't feel like it's a bad thing to say, but I know too many people that be like, hey, man, if I knew what I knew, if I knew what I knew now, I wouldn't have had my kid with this person. I love my baby. They yeah. a blessing. But yeah. I wouldn't have had my baby with this person. And to me, that's like, it's not a terrible thing to say, but it's just like, that's why you should wait if you can. Everybody, I'm not going to lie to you. Nine out of ten people I know that have children say that, say that they wish they would have waited. Yeah. I only know... One person that was like, this was right. And then and it, nine, and it was and it was they second kid. And, and then them like it was right. And then them nine out of ten people be the ones that be commenting under our, under our videos telling us that we should have had one five years ago. Right. And tell me about you and your baby daddy relationship. And that's why it's a baby daddy. Eh. No shade. No shade, but I'm saying it's a little shade in No, little it's sa- not shade though, but like it's, a, it's nothing wrong with waiting. And there's nothing wrong with working on self. So the desperation yes. in your 30s, hey, focus on yourself. Hang it up. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And y'all know it's Halloween time, and the only thing scarier than zombies and ghosts is a person who's not in therapy. Oh, okay? I agree, because why wouldn't you want to be the best healed version of yourself? Mm-hmm. That's why y'all need to go to BetterHelp.com and make sure y'all get some therapy, because it's super convenient. It's super easy. They make it easy to change therapists if you don't like your therapist, and it's affordable, y'all. I know a lot of people be thinking therapy is so expensive, but BetterHelp is affordable for everyone. Yes, all you're going to do is go to betterhelp.com backslash poor minds. That's better, H E L P.com backslash poor minds, and you'll get 10% off of your first month. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash poor minds today to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash poor minds. All right, so now it's time to get into the bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. 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 So today, I wanted to talk about this. I wanted to let the hype die down. I had to let it die down because there's been so much going on. And we do not talk about hot topics on this show. But this led to the bed topic today because I was having a discussion with somebody. And... Um, this is why I felt like it was, like, uh, a little weird. Okay, so obviously it's the bed. We're grown. We're adults. We're talking about Shannon Sharp and what went on a, a few weeks ago, a month ago, with whenever uh, he was on live, having an adult situation mm-hmm. with his Michelles. His Michelles. It's only one. But he said his Michelles. I thought he said it with one. E. <laughs> No apostrophe S. Oh, he gonna add that S on there. Oh, Michelle's. Mm. Maybe but, it was two of them. Hmm. Twin sisters. <laughs> but a lot of people were coming out saying they felt like it was a PR move because I'm not saying nothing about, I don't know nothing about nothing, but they were saying it was a PR move because people be saying whatever about his sexuality. Having sex for a PR move, that's the topic? No, I'm playing. <laughs> But people do that. But that too. is a good topic. But even though people I know like that to question. Topic. I feel like this: stop questioning people's sexuality unless they talk about it. Yeah. First of all, that's so Shannon Sharp ain't never said nothing about this and X Y Z. Leave that man alone when it comes to that. But a lot of people were saying they felt like it was a PR move, and that's why he was making it sure it was known that it was a woman, and that's why he was saying her name. So I wanted to talk about. Because the conversation I had with this person, it was like a back and forth. Do men be moaning women's names? Yes. Do they be, be like, my Drea. Drea! 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 First of all, bitch. <laughs> Do they be... If anybody ever moaned my name like that, I would get up and fucking leave. But... So... No, because first of all, the way he was moaning that lady name, he sounded like a geriatric senior citizen. Why he was saying it? He was saying it like his name is Otis. Like how? Cornelius. How he was saying it? Come on, give us an example. My, my machine. <laughs> uh-uh. 
Mm. Oh, I'm a Oh, I'm a shell. Like, I don't know. Don't say my fucking name like that. Like, fuck what Beyonce was saying. <laughs> don't say my name if you're going to say it. <laughs> Don't say my fucking name if you're going to say it like that. Don't say it um, at all. Just... I just... Be quiet. Yeah, I'm not I'm gonna put my I'll put my hand over a nigga mouth real quick. Do you I, do that in bed? No, I, because I just feel I like do. men, I think... It's more of a Happy. like... I, have I had a man say my name before? <laughs> yes. But was it something necessarily that turned me on? Not really. That, I'm, I'm more so of a like, just say baby... No. Damn. Like, you can say my name, but I don't know. It's just not a thing that I'm just like... No, yeah, let's... Super into. Not gonna lie to you, that's like my signature move. What? If you start saying something that I don't like, I'll be like... Oh, like you cover their mouth? I cover their mouth. Okay. You be like, shut it. Okay. Well, I've never had a situation... Well, no, I... But have... I make it sexy. I do it slow. Yeah. That's... You... That's not slow. <laughs> I'm gonna do it slow... And then I'm going to just Shut grab that it. Shut that shit up. But no, but do I feel like men be saying a woman's name a lot? Like I said, I've been, I, I've had situations where a man said my name, but it wasn't necessarily like, oh, it turned me on. Oh, I like, I know. Now, if they say it, like, you know, like, if you say it at the right, you got to, that's why you got to be with a man who know how to, like, talk in bed. Yes, yes. You got to be with somebody who And know most how to, men don't know how to do that. You Let's be, be with real. Somebody, you gotta be with somebody who know how to talk in bed. My, my nigga know how to talk in bed. Right, but what I'm saying but is... But if you get with somebody who know how to do that, then like, yeah, it's fine. I love it. It wasn't given that he knew what to say. That trap. But what, cra what was crazy about it was a lot of women was like, oh, I wanted to see the tape. I wanted to see it. Oh, he sounded sexy. No, he didn't. It didn't sound... And, he no, sounded like no he was about shade. to pass out. It, no shade. And I said this on live, but, like, if it would have been, like, Ocho Cinco and his wife, because Ocho fine and his wife fine, I think Ocho know what he's saying a little bit. That would have been more believable. But, Shannon, it wasn't given what it was supposed to give. Michelle's. Michelle's, Michelle's. No. It didn't, get, it didn't do it for me. So the girls that was like, oh, Shannon. They was in the comments like, ah. Oh. And then he sold the I, Yeah, I wasn't feeling it. I felt like it was like 1953. Yes! Like, we was trying to hurry up before Master came in. Well, it wasn't <laughs> slavery in 1953. But, but, but... It was colors only. But maybe back of the bus. That's what I'm saying. Maybe it was colors only. Yeah. It was giving colors only sex. It was. Ooh. Well, that's the only sex I like <laughs> anyway, Same. to be honest. Same. But what I'm saying... Okay, outside of that... I'm just saying, like, I don't mind a man saying my name during sex, but like you said... You do you like for point. them to say your real name, or do you like for them to call you Lex P? No, don't call me Lex P in the bedroom, because it's giving fan. Because every man that I've dated that I've been in a serious situation with, they call me by my real name. Her. Oh, don't say it like that, because that's how he used to say it. I know. This, I'm just imagining <laughs> in my head. That's um, how he used to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate you for that. But no, so if you call me Lex or Lex P in bed, turn off. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. So that's why I say, like, you could say my name in bed. It's not like a thing that I like, oh, you have to say it. But like I said, I like my my like my little pet names that we call each other in real life. So you can say that. that like, that's more like, you know. I like the pet names, but I'm going to ask you. What's my name? <laughs> Say my name, Black of L A S P L A C A N D E L L I E. Black of L A S P L A You are so wrong for that. Yeah, spill this shit out. Period. <laughs> okay, so let us know. Do y'all like when a man says y'all name? I like it. I think it's girl. sexy, but just not when he got that old man girl. in 1937. Girl. Oh, that sounds like yeah. Tarzan. Drill. Bitch, Trey Songs ain't never said. I know, name. but if he did, he'd be like, Drill, 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 Drill. 
and real. You can stop now. That's all he was saying, though. No, he would not. Yes, he I would. don't even want to picture that. You. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> Bitch, no, the fuck. What's up, y'all? It's your girl XP. And it's your girl Dre and Nicole. And we are here to tell y'all about our brand new ebook and e course bundle, Pour Into Your Pod. Yes, y'all. We have been working on this for a while and we're so excited to put it out and give it to y'all because we know so many people have been asking us for such a long time about how to start a successful podcast. And we have literally put all of the information that we have and everything that we've utilized into this one ebook. Yes, and this is not your typical ebook because I know what a lot of y'all are thinking. Uh, 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 but I'm telling y'all, we give y'all direct access to how we built our brand. It's not no fluffiness and all that what I've read in ebooks before. This is an ebook that gets straight to the point and gives you all the direction you need to start your podcast today. Absolutely. And you can trust that we are putting 100% good information, no filter into this book. And it's going to help you build your brand. And it shows you exactly how we built Poor Minds and made it into a six figure company. So make sure y'all head to poorminds.com to purchase your ebook or the e course. And we also have it available in a bundle for you so you can get both. Poorminds.com, pour into your pod. It's time to get into the bop. Hey, the bop. Ow, the bop. Bow, 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 bow. Okay. So my bop of the week this week is by, I hope I'm saying this right, because I'm be messing up everybody's name, is by Malaya. She just dropped a project, and it's called, oh, damn, I don't know what, but the song is called Do It Out of Love. And this kind of goes into the topic we were talking today, because... A lot of times, if you heard that title, like, do it out of love, you would think it's talking about doing something for someone out of love. But what I resonated from this song, and that's why I love music, because you can interpret a song however you want to interpret it. So I interpreted it as self-love and how to love yourself. You're doing everything out of love for yourself. You can't love anybody until you love yourself properly. Mm -hmm. So it is such a beautiful song. She has such an amazing voice. It's very rich. I, it's something about the girls that are just eating up the R&B right now. So Malaya, Do It Out of Love, that's my bop of the week. Fire. Shout out to you, Malaya. You did your big one. Now, my bop ain't about love. That's not right. That's not right. It ain't got, right. It ain't got right. nothing to do with love. So Future just dropped a mixtape. Oh, God. You went way to the left. Album called Mixtape Pluto. Okay. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a Future stan. I have been a Future stan for a while now. Probably for like the past 10 years. Like, we go way back to Peacoat. Peacoat. Burt Berry. And it's her oh, man. Hey. Peacoat. Yeah, that was our shit. Because that was yeah. the only time I met you. It's so crazy because TikTok. people always put, okay, people always put March Madness as the number one. No, but that's how you know they wasn't really in the trenches. Man, what? Peacoat was that girl. Because even with itching. My fingers, they itch. Wait, let's do that for My karaoke. mama we, said, fuck it. We doing nigga. that for karaoke today. Family. That's not what I, I wanted to do, a love song. Okay, okay. But it's okay. Okay. Maybe we could do that. Yeah. My Savages. Ooh. Like, I'm telling y'all, like, I've been a Future stan for real before, like, all of, like, the commercial hit. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, Future just had an album that just dropped called Mixtape Pluto. He got this song on there called Too Fast. I like mm -hmm. that song. Okay. I love, I, you know me, I love any song where they be talking about tricking on a girl. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> what? I do. I love it. Because I feel like <laughs> treat your girl nice. Not on any girl, but, but yeah, on but, your girl. Yeah, treat her nice. Yeah, okay. treat your girl nice. Like, you should do what do for her. And I mean, tricking in whatever aspect that mean to her. Like, if she, like, cookware, Buy take her, her to home Rachel goods. Ray, pots and pans, nigga. Take her to home goods. If she likes Chanel... Take us to Chanel. Let me tell you, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. If she like, I'm probably putting them on game right now. If a man took me to Home Goods and said, "Go stupid," yeah, I'm you gonna get go that stupid. cat. Me you too. getting that cat immediately? I ain't gonna Home lie. Goods. What? I'm gonna go stupid if you take me to Home. You know goods. what means I'm more go to me? Stupider for Chanel. You know what means more to me though? What? I like Chanel. I got a Chanel. I got a. I got a couple Chanels. What means more to me? Take me to. 
Restoration Hardware and say, get a, a, a couch from Restoration Hardware? That, a couch from Restoration Hardware, I know if I walk in somebody's house, I can see Chanel's all day. I'm not impressed. If I see that RH on the tag underneath, and they, you know when you get RH, that R... Why are you lifting people cushions up? Because that's what I do. Because I'm like, <laughs> where you got this from? This hoe is nice as the fucking fuck. If I see that RH on there, I know you mean business. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, whatever whatever your girl like, I feel like you should treat her nice mm. and buy that for her. Yep, 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 yep. So, anyways, yeah, I'm an advocate. Shout out to Future. So, shout out to Future. But and the whole, Restoration Hardware. But the whole fact, somebody, one of y'all, need to give us a sponsorship, Future or Restoration Hardware. I'll take both. I'll take either one or both of them. <laughs> so, yeah, mm. I love that song. But the whole, honestly, the whole, the whole album is good. But I... To me, future albums never meet. I mean, he's a he's a classic. He gives us albums kind of like how Prince does. He really. Do you think he's like the Sinatra of our generation? Absolutely, I think he is the yeah. Sinatra. How people feel about Sinatra and classical music is how people in rap feel about future. It's not even about rap. I feel like a no, hundred years from now, this is gonna be classical music. I don't think it'll be classical, but I think for the rap you stands. Are. Future music is um, legendary. It does. It ages well. Future's music ages well. There's some rappers who were so hot at one time, and I listen to that music. No replay value. Future's replay value is 100. percent And there's not a lot of artists that can do that. You know who has replay value? Let's mm. name some artists who have replay value. Mm. Beyonce. Anita Baker. Anita Baker. Rihanna. Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. Jay-Z. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Drake. Mm. Future. Um, but we're talking... We Onika. Think- Nicki Minaj. These are artists who replay value is 100%. Frankie Beverly. Frankie Be- but Frank Ocean, if we're talking about Frank... <laughs> replay value <laughs> okay. is through the roof. I'm talking about if you listen to Who's an album. I'm talking about Frank. I said And you can listen to it 10 years from now and that whole still slap. What's, what's the name of that first Frank Ocean album? God, oh my God. Life changing. Nostalgia Ultra. Life changing. I can still put that on. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Oh. I don't care. I'm going to be 90 years old still listening to Nova Kane. Nova That's Kane. my shit. That whole album. Forever. Swim Good? Yeah, Swim oh Good. Oh my this God. Boy. Swim Good to this day. Swim fucking How did we good. forget Jay-Z? Duh. No, we said Jay-Z. We I did? Said, yeah, I oh. said Jay-Z. I said Jay-Z. Kanye um, too. Kanye. It's it's some people who know how to make music that's gonna last for years. Yeah, and yes. I feel like y'all may not like Future because of whatever his personal life is, but I'm telling you, trap music is something that can last forever. Jeezy, yeah, put on a Jeezy album, and that music is still hard right now. Jeezy, some people know how to make music. I make it winter time. Man. Heard the streets hungry. Yeah, well, it's dinner the other time. One? Jeezy like the drink. Jeezy like the smoke. Jeezy like the vent. Arm and hammer with his coat. What? And still get the club lit. Yeah, we, show, we showing that we used to really be outside. But I'm saying it's legendary <laughs> music, and I think Future makes legendary music. We have to put him in that category of legends hey. and people who make music that can last for a lifetime. Because I'm telling you, when we are in our 80s, I'm going to be listening to Future still. Future? I'm going to be asking my grandkids where your ass was at because you wasn't here. Where your ass was at when the Nick... He got a song for that too. You wasn't here? Yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. So real quick, um, item of the week, real quick, I just want to shout out this business. I know y'all been in the comments talking about my hair. I haven't worn straight hair in about two, three years. I just like a little body. But... um, I linked up with a company, and she was like, I want to send you some wigs. And I was real hesitant at first because I don't like people sending me hair. 
And I, I, I don't know, I'm just real picky. But y'all, this has been one of my favorite units. I've gotten so many compliments on it. I got a curly unit from her that's fire. If y'all follow me on Instagram, y'all saw it. Um, I got this from Hair Fiend Queens. HairFiendQueens.biz. You can order a custom glueless unit. This is glueless, so I can take it off at night. And yeah, this is some hair that I got from her. It's raw bundles. It's giving, we need a resolution. Yeah, so much well, thank you last night. It is. But yeah, she was super sweet. She took the measurements on my head. Um, she got it straight out to me super quick. Hair is raw bundles. It's a breathable cap, so I don't feel hot. Because one thing I will say, when you get a lot of glueless units, they're like a, a, a cap, and it's over your whole head. This mm. is a breathable cap, so I can scratch my scalp. Mm -hmm. I can feel my scalp right now. Um, so yeah, super professional, hairfiendqueens.biz. I'm gonna put the link in the bio. So yeah, shout out to you, girl. Thank you so much. This is some beautiful hair. This is the raw hair. This is the brown that it came in. I actually didn't want to dye it black because I'm usually a black girl. No, I like it. And like yeah. you had said, remember when you was telling me you wanted to dye it? I was yeah. like, but you said you were going to dye it lighter. Yeah. But I, I actually really like the brown. Yeah. I'm going to actually keep this one. I'm going to get another one from her. Mm -hmm. I am. So yeah, y'all make sure y'all go to hairfiendqueens.biz. You use code LexP. I think she has a code right now. So yeah, I like it. I like the straight hair. I'm vibing with the straight hair right now. I like it, right too. It's real cute. Thank it's you, real girl. cute. So, now... What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. Y'all know we have a segment on Poor Minds called Item of the Week. But do you have a product or something that you want to promote and you want it featured on Poor Minds? Your opportunity is here. Period. If you have an item or you have a business and you want to get it promoted, we are now having slots available on the Poor Minds episode. So if you would like to get your product featured for Item of the Week, all you need to do is send an email to Item of the Week pm at gmail.com that's i-t-e-m o-f-t-h-e w-e-e-k p-m at gmail.com send us an email and we'll work it out we gonna figure it out get your product get your business sponsored and yeah make you some money mm -hmm. we love to support a small business now and a black business at that but i mean it can any, be any anybody. Business we, don't, is we don't discriminate ah. any business is welcome <laughs> Now it's time to get into our favorite segment of the show. Yes. So y'all know if y'all have any questions, y'all can always send them to askpoorminds at gmail.com. That's A-S-K-P-O-U-R-M-I-N-D-S at gmail.com. Thank you, Zab. Right. Oh, okay. She knew! Okay. I know, that's right! All right. And so, yes, yeah, so send us your questions. Send us your testimonials. Let's go. Okay. Now, number question number one is a long one. Okay. Let me prepare. Let me whip my whistle. Whip that whistle. Blow your whistle. Blow your whistle. Throw your whistle over me, girl. You remember that? See, I was thinking of blow the whistle. I know you were, but that's why people try to play on P.D. Pablo top. P.D. Pablo's first album was so good. Anything is about to go down. When we in the fun, fun room, the fun room. Y'all don't know about that. Because I'm telling you, I was a music stand so bad. I listened to Petey Pablo's whole first album. He used to have a song that go like this. Blow the whistle. Doo -doo, blow the whistle. Boop, boop, blow the whistle for me, y'all. All I'm saying is, he had more than North Carolina. And uh, what was the other one? Let me say something. No, no, no. What was the other one? I don't know. Let me say. Oh, something. it was um, Freak a Leak. Oh, okay, but Freak a Leak was a national anthem. Whatever you talking about. It was a good song. Congratulations. But that's how it be. Y'all don't okay. be giving artists chance. Congratulations. Mm. Congratulations. Shout so, out to Petey Paul. Anyway, question number one. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, y'all. So I have a close friend of mine, and she has this boyfriend turned situationship going on right now. And since I've met her, she's told me nothing but horrible things about him. And she has told me so much stuff that now, when she speaks about him, I tell her that I don't want to hear it because she does nothing but goes back to the relationship and then comes back and tell me more disrespectful stuff that he's done. I've always been the friend to let my friends vent to me all the time. But with her, it's different because at this point, I've grown a hate for her man. And it irks me to hear stuff about him. I tried to do some self-evaluating because I do feel like I'm being a bit mean, knowing that this is not usually me in friendships. How do you feel about this situation? Because I don't know if I'm just being harsh and not a good friend, or am I being reasonable for my actions? Side note, I do think it has something to do with me being a little bit older than her, and I've grown out of that phase of going through hell and kept going back in a relationship. So seeing her do it is kind of like the signs of disrespect are in her face and it's upsetting me that she's allowing it and going back. Girl, when it comes to like friends and amen, if you have a real concern, I definitely feel like you should voice your concern. However, if you voice your concern and your friend don't take heed and they want to still be in the situation, then you got to step back and let people learn their life lessons on their own. Because my mama always told me this saying my whole life growing up. People know when they've had enough. People know their tolerance level. You don't never know somebody's tolerance level, but people know their own tolerance level. Trust me, when somebody is good and fed up with some shit, no matter what it is, whether it's a nigga, whether it's a situation, whether it's a job, a career, whatever, when people are fed up, they be fed up and they gonna leave. But I feel like people push their friends away by trying to pressure their friends to want to do what they want them to do. And I know sometimes even in... Because, I mean, she didn't say it was, like, a violent situation or nothing. But I just know, especially in, like, violent situations and stuff, people be always feeling like they have to, like, keep telling their friend what to do. I just feel like you have to say your piece and speak your piece and be okay with, like, stepping away and taking a step back because... You can't stress yourself with other people's affairs because you got your own life to worry about. And just pray for them, hope for the best, hope that God keep covering them and keeping them safe in whatever situation they in. But, like, don't stress yourself about somebody else's situation because if they wanted to be in a better situation, they would put themselves in a better situation. And I just want to add on to what you said um, about, like... Tolerance levels. Yeah. Because things that she can tolerate may not be things that you can tolerate, but switch the roles. There's things that you have tolerated from men that she would never tolerate, okay? So I think that's what we have to realize, too. Because I am in a situation like that right now. So I'll say this. There's things that I have been through with men that I have dated that my friends were looking at me like, Lex, what the actual fuck? And then there were situations where I'm looking at them and it was different, but I'm like, hey, what are you doing? So we have to give people grace. As long as her life is not in danger, all you need to do is be a friend and let her vent. When she's ready to go, she'll be ready to go. Like I said, as long as he's not beating her, putting her life in danger, sometimes you have to take a step back. Agreed, agreed. All right, question number two. Hi, Drea. Hi, Lex. I'm a 36-year-old straight male. Each time I talk to women and they mention my teeth, I have become instantly insecure. My teeth are not the whitest and I have crooked fangs. I brush, floss, and use mouthwash twice a day, but I'm still not picture perfect. I have considered getting braces over the last few years, but I'm always unsure of how people, specifically women, will view an adult man with braces. What are your thoughts? Would you respect someone who is trying to fix their teeth, or would you see it as a major turnoff? So let me say this. I had braces in um, middle school. My bottom teeth are so crooked because I took off my retainer. So I have fangs at the bottom, right? It is honestly one of my biggest insecurities because when I record videos, I'm like, oh my God, my bottom teeth, my bottom teeth. But I talk with my bottom lip. But 
That doesn't stop it me. It doesn't from, look wait, bad. Huh? It doesn't look bad. But I'm saying it's just a personal insecurity. But I whitened my teeth. I brushed my teeth. I flossed my teeth. So let me say this first of all. Your teeth are not the whitest, but I don't care how cro crooked your teeth are. They can be white. They can be white. So if your teeth are like yellow, some crest whitening strips, some crest whitening mouthwash, could I suggest? I don't care what level your teeth are at, straight, crooked, your teeth shouldn't be yellow. Okay? But I will say this. Any woman that meets you and she's judging you for having braces, if I see a man with braces in this economy, because if you got braces, unless you go into one of them bottom people in their basement, you, you got to go to the dentist every month for braces. You do. You're not going to... If a woman is judging you because you have braces, that's not the woman for you. Let me tell you something. I had braces before, too. So I've had braces... Then I had to wear a retainer, and now y'all know I have veneers or whatever. But even with my veneers, I still have to wear a retainer at night sometimes because I used to have, like, gaps before I had braces. So if I don't wear retainers for a long period of time, no matter what, my teeth are always going to, like, start to, like, migrate or whatever. So I just feel like... Anybody who is interested in bettering themselves and bettering their appearance, I don't think anything is wrong with that. No matter which way you choose to go about it, whether you're getting veneers, whether you're getting braces, whether you're Invisalign. getting Invisalign, whatever it is, it's like, if you have a problem with something about yourself, fix it. And nothing is wrong with that. And don't let nobody make you feel no type of way about it. Because you might feel, meet a girl who got braces and then y'all like, Braces gang. Yeah. Honestly, if at, I'm 35 and he said he was 36, if I met a 36-year-old man that had braces, it would not bother me. It wouldn't bother me either. Yeah, it wouldn't bother me at all. You had to put a mouth guard on, though, when you... Going downtown. Well, I shouldn't feel your teeth if what, you have braces or not. If you know what you're doing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So braces don't... Yeah, braces wouldn't bother the me. The braces ain't stopping us. Nothing. nothing at all. So, sir, get your braces. Get your Invisalign. Get, get your braces. You yes. Do Any whatever. woman... I, you know what I've noticed? An influx of women online. And men, too. Y'all are saying some things that are so outrageous. Just because... You know what's gonna get a what reaction. What they be saying, Lee? Like one girl said something like, "If I see a man pull out a credit card on a date, I know he broke. Because why is you using credit to pay for a meal? So he can get his points. That's how I know. But that's you. how I know y'all ain't yeah. got no credit. That's what I be saying. Like, stop it. <laughs> so if a woman is telling you, "Oh, I don't like you because you got braces," she don't know. She don't know. It's okay, boo. So yeah, get your braces and fix your teeth, Buki. Hey y'all, it's Dre and Nicole, CEO of Muse Beauty. Are you ready to take your beauty brand to the next level? Well, I've got something special just for you. I'm introducing the keys to a successful e-commerce brand ebook. In this guide, I spill all of my secrets on how I built Muse Beauty from the ground up into a global beauty brand, serving thousands of customers from all over the world. From defining your brand vision to mastering marketing strategies, this book literally covers it all. Plus exclusive highlights and tips that you won't find anywhere else. But wait, y'all, it's more. Check out my curious Curated vendors list featuring over 50 top suppliers in the beauty, fashion, and packaging industries. Whether you need cosmetics, accessories, clothing, or chic packaging, I've got you covered. So what are you waiting for? Go to www.musebeautycollection.com and get your ebook, your vendors list, or you can bundle them both together. All right, bye y'all. So wait, they said Ty had a Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna enter the chat. This isn't about me. Okay. I have a friend. Okay. My man act right. Okay, so I ain't got her. Don't worry about period. that. But I have a friend. Okay. And she was she's dating this guy. Mm -hmm. He actually recently moved down to Atlanta for her. Okay. For her. I'm gonna say that. They were staying together, but he has his own place now. But she's been noticing some weird things going on between him and her best friend. They're mm -hmm. texting each other a lot. They're going to each other's houses and, like, will tell her when they're there. So, like, he'll be like, oh, yeah, so-and-so pulling up now. And then she'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm about to go pop in real quick. All of these types of things. This is not the first time it's happened. It's happened a number of times. And she's feeling, un it's making her feel uncomfortable. She's supposed to talk to the friend about it, but the friend has been kind of distancing herself. 
And then when she told the boyfriend that she was going to have dinner and talk to the friend about it, he said, don't bring me up in the conversation. Mm. Now, me, I wouldn't be going for none of that. That's just me personally, because why are y'all friends? I introduced y'all. Why are y'all now taking this relationship and then being sneaky about it behind my back? Mm -hmm. So just asking y'all, what would y'all do in that situation? And would you allow your friend to be good friends with your man or your boyfriend? I mean... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, like, I'm cool with my, my man being friends with my friends. Without you being there? Yeah. Because I feel like I trust my friends and I trust my man. But it's like, because if I don't trust either one of y'all, why the fuck is y'all in my life? Like, if I feel like you gonna do some weird shit when you around my nigga and I'm not around, not saying that, like, y'all could be coordinating, like, hangout dates. Exactly. That's what I'm but saying. That's like, that's what's going on. That's what's going so, on. So, yeah, no, absolutely not. But, like, if y'all, like, because, like, we've had each other's man's phone numbers and stuff before. But let me tell you something. I would never be like, your man ain't ever gonna hit you and be like, oh, Lex finna pull up. And I, you ain't never gonna randomly right. call me and be like, oh, I'm pulling up at XYZ. But that's, real quick. but that's what I was about to say. That's when you have to like nip shit in the bud because why the fuck is y'all being friendly with each other like that? Like, it's okay for y'all to have, like, a cordial relationship and be cool. And I trust my man and my friend enough to have each other numbers and to be able to communicate with each other because you just never know what could happen. But it's when all of the friendly and extra shit start going on. Like, why y'all hanging with each other without me? Y'all going out me? to eat. And let, why y'all going out to eat? Being in each other's or, house is crazy. Being in each other's house. Let me say, because I get it. I... I am a woman who has male friends. I have dated men who have female friends, but guess what they do? They make sure I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. I make sure they comfortable. Hey, we around together. Even if something happens, hey, babe, I'm letting you know. I know you out of town right now. I need something done. He, he about to come help me real quick. It ain't no weird shit. I'm mm -hmm. always letting you know when we're in each other's presence or X, Y, Z. So I say all that to say, if... I said, hey, I don't feel comfortable with this relationship. I'm about to go out to eat with my best friend and have a conversation. A man should be like, okay, hey, mm -hmm. man, do, babe, look, I told you where I stand, and you know me and her don't have nothing going on. Do what ha you have to do because I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. He's gaslighting her mm -hmm. to try to make her feel like she crazy. Well, don't bring me up. You tripping. You tripping. Because let me say one thing that I have learned about gaslighting, too. Because y'all like to make the first word people like to throw out is insecurity. It's not about insecurity mm -hmm. because guess what? I can, you can have the most confident woman or man in the world. Why do you want them to feel uncomfortable? She's voiced her opinion that she's uncomfortable. As soon as my man or my partner or my friend, even if my friend says, hey, Lex, this makes me uncomfortable when you do this, I'm changing that shit. Yeah. I don't ever want you yeah. to feel uncomfortable with anything I'm doing because I'm your partner. I'm your friend. So I'm going to, hey, let's nip this in the bud. So if you said, I'm uncomfortable with this situation and he's not trying to fix it, that's the red flag. Something going on. I mm -hmm. need to see that motherfucking text miss. Mm -hmm. Let's scroll. <laughs> yeah. Let's I scroll. Agree. What's going on? Yeah. What's going on? Mm. Cause I've been in that situation but before. I, where I don't like, know. Hey, I feel uncomfortable. And y'all, and it was like, oh, hey, this. I was like, oh, okay. And y'all can let me know how y'all feel, but I also just feel like that goes into. Taking the quality control in your friendship. Hey, correct. When a man, because that's where I see an issue. Is like this is your. This is supposed to be your best friend. Because that it, ain't my. That ain't no best friend of mine. Why are you going to my, my friend is dating somebody and like having that. sex with somebody and they're in love with somebody? Because obviously they're dating, they're in love. They say I love you. You're a brother. Mm -hmm. You're a brother to me. Mm -hmm. As soon as my mm -hmm. friend says, "Hey, I really like this person," like me and him. That's bro. What up, bro? Yeah. You ain't never gonna be in my presence without her. 
And if you are my presence right. without her, it's because we're planning something for, for her. her. Or it's because her. we both happen to be in the same place and we didn't know the... You know what I mean? Because sometimes you might go to a club, whatever. Yeah, but it's like, hey, bro, what's club? up? But my eye on you. Yeah. Just act up if you want to. I'm snitching. Are you with a bitch? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. Period. Yeah, niggas. See. And then my friend... You gotta, you like, gotta send a nigga the peace sign. What's I have up? never once in my life had a friend and I introduced her to my man and all of a sudden they start to Besties is crazy. My man don't have none of my friend's numbers. Yeah, because why? Cause why? Why? What are, we, what are y'all talking about? And even if he did, it would be because, hey, I'm trying to do something for her or if that was a s- scenario. No, we, that's what I was going to say. We had, we've had each other man number before. Yeah, but it was more so of like, and I think it's also the talking sneakiness about, about them. It. Well, about, and my nigga ambushed you. But what I'm saying <laughs> is more so about like, let's talk about the person you're dating. What's your number? That's what I'm saying. It's talking about yeah. the person they're dating or what's going on. It's not yeah. like, oh, let's hang out. So your friend needs to understand. That ain't your friend. That girl yeah. is not your friend. You need to get rid of the both of them. Yeah. And let them be. Cut both of them off because they both weird as fuck. It ain't nothing that good. Thank y'all. Man, no. You welcome, Ty. Ty, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was juicy. All right. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Make sure y'all subscribe to our Patreon. Patreon.com backslash Poor Minds. Poor Chronicles drops every Monday. The brand new episodes of Poor Minds drop early on Wednesday when you sign up to a certain tier. Period. And then Poor Chronicles, you know, it's a brand new show. Y'all gonna love it. Check it out. And, um, yeah. Y'all gonna love Poor Chronicles. Make sure y'all shop MuseBeautyCollection.com That's M-U-S-E-B-E A-U-T-Y Collection dot com. I have on Peachy today, which I feel like I never really wear this lip color. And I've noticed that I don't really wear it because I feel like people don't really be buying it as much as they be buying the other ones. Mm -hmm. But so, yeah. Today I have on Peachy and I have on the Chestnut Lip Liner and then I also have on the Glazed Lip Gloss, of course. So make sure y'all go to MuseBeautyCollection.com and get y'all lip glosses, y'all matte liquid lipsticks and lip liners. Also, make sure y'all follow me on LTK. It's linked in the description box. Make sure y'all follow my YouTube channel. It's linked in the description box. And um, what else? Oh, yeah. Leave me a testimony for Sephora Squad. Oh, they're still picking it? Well, the applications are closed, but you can still leave a testimony. Okay, period. And we'll see y'all next week, y'all. Bye, y'all. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And we have a very exciting announcement today. We have a brand new show dropping. Yes, so we have a brand new show dropping, y'all, on Patreon. It's going to air on September 2nd, and it's called Poor Chronicles. We're going to be doing so much stuff on there. We're going to be doing challenges. If you can't go to Bella Noche, where the hell could you go? If you can't go to Bella Noche, where the hell could you go? <laughs> We're going to be doing talk to me, chit chat with me. We're gonna be spilling a little tea. Hey, oh my God. No, you didn't. Oh my God. Everything y'all been wanting to see, we gonna be doing it right here on Patreon. Yes, y'all ask us for so much. Well, we finna give it to y'all every single Monday. And it's gonna be a time. Y'all know Poor Minds has grown into its own little entity. Well, we gonna have a lot of fun still over here at Poor Chronicles. So make sure y'all tune in September 2nd. It's going down. Thanks. Shout out to Future. The legend. We had to give him his flowers today for giving us this classic. Ready? Ready? Hey, my mama said, fuck it, nigga, hit the streets and live. Got some crack in the corner, and I did what I did. The neighbors, they don't like me. I got J's at the door. Told my grandma I don't need a bed. I'm sleeping on the floor. Got my tool and my blow, then my two main hoes. Me and all my walls stick together like the Zos. Side pies say who got that yay for the low, and I keep birds with me like I'm straight out Holly Grove. My, my fingers, fingers, they itching, they itching for that paper. My fingers, they itching, they itching for that paper.
I'm riding around the city and I got, got that calculator. calculator. I'm, I'm a motherfucking, motherfucking monster when they come to get that paper. Hey. My fingers, they itch. They itching for the paper. My fingers, they itch. They itching for the paper. I'm riding around the city and I got that calculator. I'm a motherfucking monster when they come to get that paper. I'm hey. a dog. And I eat that dog food. I'm a G. I put red on all my shoes. Come, come and see. see. My familiar like I prove and I plead. Yeah. Not I guilty guess. until proof. I got more fair truths than shoes. I got chicks in the coop. Got shooters that'll shoot. And I stay on DJ screw. When I drop, we come in like screw. <laughs> DJ Clue and I profit. I go about a school. I can't lose. Free banding to put you on the news. They hit that blue flames. Hey, man. Who got that pick? Now she ain't no Man, fuck it. Future started rapping too fast. And guess what? They itching. They itching for that paper. My finger. They itching. They itching for that paper. I'm riding around the city. Yeah, and I got that cocky later. I'm a... I'm getting that paper. Hey! They itching for that paper. Ow! My fingers, they itching. They itching for that paper. Ow! I'm riding around the city and I got that calculator. I'm, I'm a, a motherfucking, motherfucking my... monster when it comes to getting that paper, A. I don't give a fuck if they was real sisters. I'm fucking her too cause I'm her real mister. Call me big mister cause I got that big dick. I fuck her so good till she throw up. She sick. What I did in the episode. Oh, my bad, yeah. my bad. It's okay. <laughs> so, y'all make sure y'all share the content, like, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. And let me say this before we close out. Y'all, there is one Twitter account that is connected to Poor Minds. It's P-O-U-R underscore M-I-N-D-S. Y'all are tagging the wrong Poor Minds page. If you see at Poor Minds with no underscore, that is a fake page. Do not follow that page, okay? They blocked me, Andrea, and the Poor Minds page on both. So we only have one Instagram, one Twitter, one TikTok. It is P-O-U-R underscore M-I-N-D-S. All right? And we got hella fake Facebook pages. Oh, the Facebook pages. It's the our face. The crazy thing is our Facebook page actually have the least amount of followers. So if you on Facebook, the one that's ours got the least amount of followers. The one that's not us got like two hundred and fifty thousand followers. But y'all know it's fake if you actually look at the content because the caption is like whoever it is don't speak English because their captions are like Bumba Claus. Should men should men pay bill? <laughs> should men pay bill? Yes, no. Check answer below. Block, block. <laughs> boya, boya, boya. Like, that's literally what the captions are. I like, like, you want that DDG? Bomba Claw. Bomba Claw. I love that video.